Okay, I'm standing back from the outcrop again. Um, last thing I wanted to show you here, um, we're looking at that massive sandstone and how it cuts down through cross-bedded sandstone. What I wanted to point out here is that there appear to be at least two different beds of massive sandstone. The one that sits directly over this erosion surface here and then there's another surface higher up going through right about like this that also has massive sandstone above it. So two intervals of massive sandstone and then what's above them are thinner beds of cross bedded sandstone again. The sandstone here is all medium grained. It's fairly well sorted and even in the massive sandstone about the same grain size. So there's no grain size difference between the massive sandstone and the cross bedded sandstone. Um, the massive sandstone isn't entirely massive. I think you might be able to see very faintly up here towards the top that there are some what appear to be deformed layers within it and um, down below right above this surface I think I showed you before that there are some faint parallel laminations in the sandstone that's massive above that erosion surface and parallel to it. So your goal with all of this is to interpret all of these beds in terms of depositional processes and try to work out the environment of deposition based on the facies you see and their arrangement. So just to recap everything that we've seen here, we see a lot of cross beds. We see reactivation surfaces in some of those cross beds, but not all. We see uh, a channel incise through those cross beds into which um, massive sandstone has been deposited. And there are at least two beds of massive sandstone contained within that channel surface. The lower contact of the massive sandstone is very irregular, cuts down and up through the cross bedded sand below it. But the upper surface of those beds is relatively horizontal, looking like it was planed off, and then more cross beds deposited on top of it at some later time. I will tell you that these larger cross beds on the right hand side of the outcrop, the ones I'm approaching right now, are typical of large bar surfaces in rivers and sometimes in other environments that have large scale dunes in them. So the upper bed here, this one, is about a meter and a half thick. The one below it's about a meter thick. And then again, the reactivation surfaces up here indicate um, some periodic changes in either the strength or the direction of the current that deposited this sandstone. So those are hints. And I will provide you with a reference on the geology of Turkey Run State Park that talks about many outcrops around here that are similar to this one and have similar features and that might clue you in as to how to interpret this. I will also provide you with a photograph and what you ought to do is mark up on that photograph where those facies occur, what the bounding surfaces in between them look like in order to have something to, uh, to refer to when you write up your interpretation of these sediments. 
Okay, well that's it for this outcrop, and what I'm gonna do next is we're again in this little hollow in Turkey Run State Park, and as I look south, down that hollow, you can see that it, this little stream here cuts a pretty deep gorge through the sandstones, and I'm going to walk you through that gorge, and it takes a left-hand turn uh, down towards the end there, and we'll walk around that left-hand turn, and from that vantage point, we will be looking north at these cross-bedded sands that are headed south, and so we'll get an upcurrent view of some of the cross beds that we've been looking at here from the side. So here now I'm facing west and so south is to my left. Okay, so next video I'll be walking down that hollow.